Back at the Monster Mile, just finished a set of green flag pit stops, and Jimmy Johnson has the lead over Kyle Busch. It was a 4.4 second lead before the stops. Now it's just a 1.3 second lead, and most of the difference can be accounted for when Jimmy Johnson came on to pit road. He had some troubles getting onto this pit lane. Now watch Jimmy here, and look as he crosses the first commitment line, how much he slows down. In the pit studio with Rusty and Brad, and what this really goes to is how the pit road timing lines work. Listen to the audio on his car, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that as we live with Jimmy. Listen. Yeah, Alan, right there. He just obviously thought he'd come in pit road way too hot. He slowed down so he wouldn't get a speeding penalty, but obviously he slowed down just a little bit too much, and he lost all that time on pit road, almost three seconds. But the good thing is he's flat flying on the racetrack right now. He's by far the quickest car at the moment. Uh, I guess my theory, I got one of two theories. Either he thought he was too fast and had to slow down mm -hmm. and stretch that time out between the first two timing lines, or he had trouble finding the gear he needed to for his pit road speed. Just listening to that engine sound? Yeah, but I believe it was your first uh, theory there. I think he was just concerned about speeding, making sure he was going to be correct in the zones, slow enough in the zones, and just got on the brakes and loaded up a little bit too hard. All right, well, Jimmy's driving away from second place now. Lap time's looking good, and Johnson almost now back up to a two-second lead. Let's go up to speed with Pepsi. Dave, what are they saying in the leader's pit? Well, Alan, I talked this morning to Chad Knauss about Jimmy's strength here, why he's good here, and Chad goes, you know, contrary to popular belief, concrete really does change a lot over the course of the day. Jimmy's very adaptable, and that helps us. Remember my report on the last pit stop? Jimmy had backed up his entry a little bit, so it changed the center of the corner, so that changed the way they were working on the car. Adapt to this track, and maybe if he can adapt to his pit road entry, uh -huh. <laughs> he can win this thing, Vince. Well, Kyle Busch won this thing in May. Can they do it again today? Well, Kyle says the car is pretty good. He said, I'm not quite sure how to make it go faster, though. That's what he needs. He likes the balance of the car right now, but he just doesn't quite have the speed that he wants. They dodged a bullet with that wall contact. Very minor damage on the right side. Doc? What a difference a year makes for Joey Logano. A year ago, he was rolling his Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota over off of turn three. Today, he is rolling along here in third position, trying to get his first ever top five at Dover. Last pit stop, half around the wedge, half around down the track bar. The car has been loose, now is much, much better. Okay. Hey, Doc, Carl Edwards maintained that fourth position throughout the round of pit stops. He did ask right afterwards, hey, Bob, did they make that adjustment in the right direction? It seems a little bit looser. Remember, it was loose. He said, yeah, bud, we sure did. And then just a couple laps later, Carl said, yeah, okay, yeah, it's good, it's good. Jamie? This 31 team, Jeff Burton, feels like they found something last weekend at Loudon. They said they were lacking speed. Well, they found it, ran top five until they ran out of fuel at the end. This week, they unloaded with that speed. He qualified 27th, but the car is showing what it's capable of. He's worked his way up to fifth. Doc? Jeff Gordon is back in sixth position. Now, although he is a four-time winner here, when I asked this crew before the race, how would you rank Dover among the 10 chase races in terms of best or worst racetracks? They said it's absolutely our worst track. We've had this one circles of May. We don't run well here. If we can walk away with a top 10 finish, we'll be very, very happy. They have done a lot to tighten the car. Wedge, track bar, air pressure. It is getting better. They might get a top five. Vince. Well, you could almost say the same thing about the 11 and Denny Hamlin. They know that this is their worst track, certainly their worst in the chase, but they had a good run here in May, finished fourth, and they thought if there's anywhere near that kind of finish today, they're going to walk out of here with the points lead. So far, the car's been loose most of the day, but Denny wanted no changes on that last stop. It's neutral now. Dave Burns? Look at Kurt Busch putting on the pressure. I think he's got his mojo back now. His crew picked him up spots through that round of pit stops, at least two by my count. And since he's been running on this run, no words on the radio. I think Kurt's car is better, and I think he's feeling better about driving it, Vince. The 39 of Ryan Newman running in the ninth spot right now. Newman says the car is a little bit snug, but he didn't want any changes, just a very slight air pressure adjustment on that last pit stop. They've been really happy with their car this weekend, although they've been fighting turn one a little bit when it lands with maximum compression. Haven't had so much of an issue with that today, and uh, to crew chief Tony Gibson was hoping that would be the case as the speed slowed down a little bit, particularly in race traffic. Doc? Remember I told you the plan for Kevin Harvick was a 
they're getting to the top ten by halfway. That's what they told me. That's all the plan they had, but they didn't tell me anything else. That's as far as he's gotten, I guess, so far. He got the tenth, and he is staying in tenth position, although they are going back now on a track bar adjustment after the previous stop to get the car better. Yellow on the racetrack, guys. Well, and this is a big break for A.J. Allmendinger running back in 14th position. He had worked his way back on the lead lap. He pitted early, and now it's paid to bend. And it is a debris caution, we're being told, from NASCAR. Well, it did work out great for him. I mean, he had the best car. He was leading the race and had that tire go down, had to make that green flag stop, and it's taken him this long to really kind of race his way back in into this thing, and now he gets to reset. It's equal tires with everyone. Let's update you on some of the other teams. Obviously, Matt Kenseth, 18th, a lap down. Greg Biffle in the chase, 20th, a lap down. Also, Tony Stewart, 25th, two laps down, and Clint Boyer is three laps down in 27th. Those four guys are in some serious trouble right now. Yeah. While we've got a moment, let's go back to Jimmy Johnson on pit road. How about another theory? Remember his only pit road speeding penalty? Came was right here. Right here. He was out. leading the race at that time. Well, he had too yeah. much to lose and not a lot to gain by trying to push the issue in that segment. I think he did the right thing. And if it comes down to trying to race somebody for the win and make a green flag stop, he might push it a little bit more, but he did the, exactly yeah. what he needed to do right there. Yeah, and another driver I want to talk about is Kirk Busch. Dave, as Dave reported, his pit crew did a great job, but he did a fantastic job after that pit road speeding penalty that he had. He's got himself up in eighth. They better watch out for him before this is over. Okay, and of course, keep your eye on Kyle Busch's team. That, uh, that crew has doing, done some remarkable pit turnarounds. Here we go. Everybody's coming in. We're going to find out. This could be very, very pivotal in this race, even though we still got 109 laps to go. Doc, I think uh, Joey Logano is going to be coming your way first. Yeah, Marty, he's the first one to come down through this end of pit road. They're going to make a couple of slight adjustments for Joey. The car had gotten better very, very much to his liking. Four tires top it off on fuel. They said this late in the race, not a time to make huge swings on the race car. Just minor changes. Fence. The 18 of Kyle Busch, they're going to make an air pressure adjustment in the right front. Also a little bit of wedge and a four tire change. He likes it, but needs it to turn better, Dave. Third place Carl Edwards' car is good. Only changes four fresh tires on Jimmy Johnson's car. They're going to make a track bar adjustment a little bit tight. And front tire carrier Art Simmons is going to put a little piece of tape on the front for 48. And it looks like Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, sorry about that, is going to get the lead, guys. Yeah, boys. Thank you. The JGR crew just turned on another awesome, great performance. Guys. He takes over the race lead. Jeff Gordon picks up a spot at the expense of Jeff Burden. Here's the race off. It's close, but Kyle Busch gets him at the line. And look how close it was between Carl and Joey Logano as well. And as we get ready to head to break, there is the debris that NASCAR is out picking up on the track. And we've got 108 laps to go, and we've got our ninth leader. Took 292 laps, but Kyle Busch is now in the race lead for the first time today, and here's how. Yeah, you see right there, just a little bit, nine-tenths of a second by the crew, and that just is enough to make a spot on pit road. This is a big spot for him, though. He got the lead. Elliott Sadler's going to get the lucky dog. Nine wave arounds. Rega, Gilliland, Keselowski, Boyer, Hornish, Smith, Scott, Tony Stewart, Reigns. Here we go. It's Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson up front, Edwards, Logano, and Jeff Gordon. That's your top five. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson spun the tires there. Kyle Busch got a great start from that outside spot that I think he learned a little bit about that yesterday when he won the nationwide race. And Logano is going to take over second position if he can hold on to it. Here comes Jimmy back underneath. Right behind him, Burton. And Carl Edwards going after each other. And yes. Kurt Busch is taking a peek. We may go three wide here. No, he slides up. Here comes Jimmy underneath the 20. Well, it's a tough spot right now down the inside. These air pressures low. A loose race car probably to start with. See, Jimmy had to slide in behind Joey Logano. Oh, and oh, Almendinger just about got turned off turn two. Edwards was loose. Almendinger was even looser. Hangs on to it. Does a nice job of keeping it off the wall. Like Burton loose, trying to hold Kurt Busch back there. Well, I watched Kyle Busch work his tires really hard under that caution, trying to get them all warmed up for this restart. It really paid off for him. And that's just a driver paying attention to everything you have to do to try to win these races and make the best of a situation. You know, the irony of the situation, look who's running first and second right now. Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, little deja vu from yesterday. That's where these two finished. 1-2 for Joe Gibbs Racing. 
course, we've still got 102 laps to go, just about 25% of the race distance. When we talk about those guys, you don't get up there in the front of these by accident. You know, there's reason behind it. We heard Kyle Busch talk about learning some things yesterday that was going to benefit him today, and he's shown that. A chance to make history. He's tied with a number of drivers with four sweeps in NASCAR history of Nationwide and Sprint Cup, but he could be the first to do a sweep of all four races at a track where the series runs twice a year if he can win today. On board right now with Denny Hamlin. He's running ninth. That's Jeff Gordon right in front of him. And again, I guarantee you, Hamlin is thrilled with his run so far. Well, he probably is, but the one thing that we've seen throughout the progression of the day is him slip back one or two spots after kind of each round of pit stop that these other drivers make their cars a little bit better. So he continues to fall back towards that just maybe working himself outside the top ten. And with both of his teammates running one, two, I mean, they've done the opposite. They've kind of worked their way to the front. All right, well, you see the 1.4 second lead that Kyle Busch has over Joey Logano, but let's go back and take a look at the restart and that tire spin you were talking about. I just watch this right here. Before they get the green, now he's just, well, this is actually the green flag, but right before that, he had been really working those tires. Yeah, he had been doing that, but boy, he pulled a slick move right there. He saw Jimmy Johnson kind of get in the gas and pull up there, and then he took off. He knew he had an advantage. Jeff Burton with Kurt Busch all over. Remember, Busch had that speeding penalty. He has bounced back nicely. Carl Edwards right behind in sixth position. Then Paul Menard with a great run going in seventh. You see Menard in the 98th, top of your screen, followed by Jeff Gordon and Denny Hamlin. And Ryan Newman, that rounds out your top 10. Let's get an update on the 48, Dave. Marty, on that restart, it's interesting. Chad reminded Jimmy before they came to green what you guys were talking about. Work those tires in. And Jimmy keyed the radio back. Yep, I got it. Now, other drivers have been talking about on this restart, drivers including Carl Edwards and Jamie McMurray, just how slick it is out there. What's different? It's really slimy out here. So, combination there, it seems like he did the right thing, but I think the track is real slick right now, too. Well, and the sun has come out again, and you see at the top of your screen, here comes Gordon taking a peek under the 98, and it looks like he may get the spot. Now, take that spot. So, move Jeff up to seven. And he's pulling away. These drivers are all just searching around in these corners to see where they can go around, get a little bit of grip somewhere. I've been watching this 18 car. He literally is right on the bottom of the racetrack. We talked earlier about the rubber not quite as bad down there. You can see it's just a little grayer. Even though his right sides might have to get in it, he's got that little bit of grip in the left side. But if you've noticed, a lot more cars have been going down there, and it is starting to get darker, so the compromise comes together. Here comes Almendinger. Look man. out. He's flying around Mark Martin. He's on a mission, man. That gives him 11th. Bump uh, Mark back to 12th. Two laps down last week at... Uh, at one point at New Hampshire, came back to get back on the lead lap. He was a couple of laps down here. Vince, he's got another great run going. Now, one of the things that Mike Shipman, his crew chief, had talked to AJ about during this run is the fact that they've been off uh, sequence with the other cars because of the fact they had to come in when they picked up that debris and had that right rear going down. But now they're back on sequence, and they feel like they're as good as anybody when they're on the same tires as everyone else. He told AJ, get your game on and go get him. AJ's listening. Came back to finish 12th last week at New Hampshire. And here are the lap leaders. Remember, you get the bonus points, and Jimmy Johnson's got to lead 11 more laps, and Kyle Busch is racking him up right now at 16. Yeah, Jimmy thought that he was going to have that kind of well in hand, maybe. Once Almendinger had his problems, he'd be able to get those five bonus points. 18's keeping him from doing that right now. We've had nine leaders and 12 different lead changes so far in this race, and we have 91 laps to go here at Dover. There's your top five with Kyle Busch looking to make another page of history.